the U.S. Postal Service has been spying on our social media posts, targeting people on the left and the right with a secretive program no one knew about. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. And hey, if you're watching this and you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's a huge help to the show. Now, here's a fun fact you probably didn't know. The U.S. Postal Service has its own police force. I know what you're thinking. What do postal police even do? Investigate the illegal stamp trade? Never find lost mail? Protect postal workers from themselves? Well, it turns out what the postal police have actually been doing is spying on us. The law enforcement arm of the U.S. Postal Service has been quietly running a program that tracks and collects Americans' social media posts. Well, at least the post office is tracking and collecting something, because they sure aren't doing that with our mail. But yes, the Postal Service has a police force. It's called the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. And they have their own website, which makes being a postal inspector look more exciting than being an FBI agent. According to the website, the Postal Inspection Service doesn't just protect the U.S. Postal Service and its employees. It targets other mail-related crimes, from illegal narcotics to mail fraud. It also targets cybercrime and child exploitation when it involves the U.S. mail system. You know, this actually makes the U.S. Postal Inspection Service sound kind of badass. Why hasn't CBS made a crime procedural about them? Okay, that's probably why. Fun fact, it was the Postal Inspection Service that arrested former Trump advisor Steve Bannon for fraud last year. But according to an internal document obtained by Yahoo News, the PIS has also been kind of a POS by spying on our social media accounts. I know, shocking, right? Yahoo News is apparently a good source of news sometimes. It's also shocking because you'd think if the post office was spending so much time monitoring our social media, they would be better at social media themselves. That's like something my grandma would tweet if she knew about Twitter. But hey, at least the post office is still bad at delivering mail. So it turns out the U.S. Postal Inspection Service runs a spying program called the Internet Covert Operations Program. They call it ICOP for short. It involves analysts looking through social media sites to look for inflammatory posts and then sharing that information across government agencies. So a shadowy government organization is monitoring all of our social media and it's being run by the post office? Was the NSA too busy or something? The post office had to pick up the slack? Now the only reason we even know about this program is because of this bulletin they posted back on March 16th. It was distributed through the Department of Homeland Security's fusion centers. That's where government partners gather, analyze, and share threat-related information. The bulletin revealed some pretty disturbing things about what the post office was getting up to. So disturbing that last week, U.S. lawmakers decided to call in the head of the post office's law enforcement division to ask some questions about it. And I'll tell you what he said after the break. Welcome back. Unless a postal inspector got you first and you were uh, returned to sender. So last week, Chief Postal Inspector Gary Barksdale had to answer some questions about ICOP to U.S. lawmakers. And it kind of seemed like he was shocked that people would question why the post office was spying on Americans. U.S. lawmakers from the House Oversight Committee said he was wildly unprepared to answer the allegations. I mean, how could he know people might be concerned about the post office spying on Americans? He probably figured everyone would be too distracted to notice because we're all still trying to find our packages that the post office lost. But thanks to this bulletin, we know at least some of what ICOP was doing. The bulletin says ICOP analysts monitored significant activity 
regarding planned protests occurring internationally and domestically on March 20th. March 20th was when a number of groups in cities around the world were going to protest against lockdowns in the worldwide rally for freedom and democracy and the Stop 5G movements. The bulletin included screenshots of posts about the protests from Facebook, Parler, and Telegram. It warned that Parler users have commented about their intent to use the rallies to engage in violence. At least one of the people targeted by the post office was a member of the Proud Boys. Now that may sound pretty serious, but the ICOP bulletin admits no intelligence is available to suggest the legitimacy of these threats. So the post office is as bad at gathering intelligence as it is at delivering the mail. That's reassuring. Now maybe you think it's okay for the post office to be spying on dangerous far-right types like the Proud Boys or people who use Parler. Because as history shows us, surely the government will stop there. Well, it turns out government overreach isn't limited to people with political opinions you don't like. At the briefing last week, Chief Postal Inspector Gary Barksdale revealed a bit more about ICOP. He said that ICOP began in 2017 to investigate potential crimes such as drug and firearms trafficking. It then expanded to monitor social media posts following the Black Lives Matter protests in Minnesota and after George Floyd was killed in police custody in May 2020. So the post office is spying on both the left and the right. Notre Dame professor James O'Rourke said the postal inspector's actions suggest that the FBI or Department of Homeland Security was using the postal inspectors as trusted subcontractors to obtain information they did not want to collect themselves. So the NSA really was too busy and had the post office step in. This isn't even funny anymore. Rachel Levinson Waldman of the bipartisan Brennan Center for Justice also thinks this is, quote, bizarre. She says that monitoring people who are simply engaging in lawfully protected speech raises serious constitutional issues. Meanwhile, a lawyer for the left-leaning ACLU said the Postal Service's widespread social media monitoring is just part of the surveillance sprawl that's happening across government agencies. Wait, across government agencies? Look, I'm not so worried about the post office, but what if the Library of Congress starts spying on Americans? Librarians are terrifying. They can see everything. So yeah, this should probably be pretty worrying no matter where you sit on the political spectrum. So how is Chief Postal Inspector Gary Barksdale defending ICOP? More after the break. Welcome back. At the House Oversight Committee briefing, Barksdale tried to justify the ICOP spying as a way to protect Postal Service employees and buildings. In fact, Barksdale began his testimony with a dramatic video of a mail truck engulfed in flames during the protests that erupted in Minnesota after Floyd's death. But why not leave it up to agencies like the FBI, Homeland Security, or the NSA? They already track us anyway. When asked about this, the chief postal inspector told lawmakers those agencies would not cooperate. So the USPS made an executive decision to have ICOP patrol social media, searching for potential threats from upcoming protests. Wait. So the post office decided on its own to spy on Americans. Well, I'm impressed that the post office took the initiative to do anything. I'm never going to get my mail delivered again, am I? Barksdale noted that the FBI and Homeland Security could not be relied upon because they don't have the ability to send text messages alerting mail carriers to nearby danger. But has ICOP ever been used to alert mail carriers of danger? Has any of the information gathered by the program ever been used to protect Americans from mail-related crimes? We may never know, because the Postal Investigation Service is tight-lipped about the details surrounding ICOP. In fact, Barksdale is so tight-lipped, he says that even he doesn't know how much money is being allocated for the spying initiative, and he would not say which agencies are coordinating with USPS. 
He also clarified ICOPS not a real program because it's incident related, not an ongoing matter. Yes, ICOP, the Internet Covert Operations Program, isn't actually a program. Sorry for the confusion. So the post office is spending an unknown amount of federal money, aka your tax dollars, spying on Americans with unknown government agencies with possibly no oversight. But hey, at least the post office is still bad at delivering mail. Representative Matt Gates and a group of House Republicans introduced a bill to defund ICOP last Friday. The bill would prohibit federal funds from being used for ICOP. It accuses the organization of being politically motivated and the USPS of operating a clandestine domestic surveillance program of Americans' social media activity. Gates says the U.S. Postal Service shouldn't have a covert surveillance program to monitor social media political behavior. And while Gates is having his own, uh, issues, the concerns over the post office monitoring American social media is something that both the left and right can agree on. Looking for inflammatory posts online just because they could potentially lead to mail-related crimes sounds like time and money spent away from things that are more clearly within the Postal Inspection Service's jurisdiction. You know, things like mail fraud, theft, money laundering, or weapons being sent through the mail system. Monitoring protesters for potential harm against post office employees and infrastructure seems kind of like a stretch. But I'm happy to say, after the backlash, Barksdale learned a valuable lesson. No, he isn't shutting down ICOM. He said the operation will continue. They're just going to put an end to the bulletin. The bulletin is why all you stupid jerks even found out about ICOP in the first place. So the post office is going to continue to spy on Americans. But hey, at least they're still bad at delivering the mail. Thanks for watching this episode. And hey, why don't you share this episode on social media so the post office knows you care. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. This is America Uncovered.